Now, scholars disagree among themselves as to when Islam came into China. Some scholars would say that definitely by 850, Islam was in China during the Tang Dynasty. Now, the Muslims went to China just like they went to India or Africa. You either go overland or you go by sea. That's why you have two patterns of penetration of Islam in China from Central Asia. And the central, this is where the linkage between Central Asians and Chinese Islam very, very closely connected. Of course, the, construct, the creation of the Soviet and before that, the Saris empires interfere with that Islamic history because many of the people who now live in Central Asia, the Kazakhs, the Uzbeks, the Tajiks, and others, were either part of the Khajar, Persian speaking, or they were part of the Ottoman empires five, seven, eight hundred years ago, if you go back in terms of history. Now, what has happened really here is that the Muslims who found themselves in China came in search of silk. Just like Marco Polo was looking for opportunities. is Italian, the Polo family from Italy, trying to find business opportunities in China. The silk road, which existed even in Roman times, would be inherited by the Arab Muslims. And the Muslims who will take over from the Romans as the dominant power in world history would monopolize the silk trade to China. And of course, many of those Arabs and Persians settle in China, in the western part of China. And that is how the Uyghurs and the Kyrgyz, the Kazakhs and others groups would be exposed to Islam. Now, the Tang dynasty would be replaced by the Song dynasty. And the Song Tang dynasty would be very instrumental in the spread of Islam. Because what happened is, even though these, just like in Africa, you had those Arab, tri I mean, Arab trading families that came and settled, but they were treated as barbarians by the Chinese. The Han Chinese saw them as barbarians. These are barbarians. They did the same thing to the Jews who were there before the Muslims. And they did the same thing to the, uh, the Nestorian Christians who were missionaries in that part of China, the Xinjiang province area. Now, what is very interesting here is that as these Muslim traders came through the silk trade and establishing themselves in the western part, northwestern part of China, Islam spread just like it did in Africa and India. You begin to see some of those groups becoming Muslims. Now, the Muslim traders who came by way of the sea with their doughboats passing through Indonesia, Malaysia, and going to China, those Muslims settled in Ganzu, you know, like uh, in the southern part of China. And these Muslims established settlements in those areas. And of course, today, if you go to Gansu, you'll find that in some of those cities, Muslim settlements that have tombs of Muslims with Arabic, Persian, Chinese inscriptions. And that's how scholars have been able to reconstruct the history of the Muslims in that part of the world. Now, so you have these two networks. You have the spice route leading through the islands, Malaysia, Indonesia, going up to China. And then you have the silk route. 